corrupt power doesn't want to let go easily. So what would you predict might be the future evolution of all of this on this planet? Well, as long as they can withhold the real relationships, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors at gigantic multinational companies, people that control military industrial complex, that sort of thing. The people behind all this and their activities, the real deep stuff, they're only going to want us to see a facade. They're going to want us to see, like if you're looking at a gigantic building, they may want to show you the building, and you can walk around the building and look at it, but they're not going to let you get inside that building. And then inside that building are rooms where things go on. They're not going to want you to even know about the rooms, let alone what goes on inside those rooms. So when they release this data, this supposed unveiling of things that you know eventually has got to come, it will be controlled. And they're going to tell us what they want us to know and how much of it will be the truth and how much will be a multi-year, carefully crafted story. And the subjects that are the hardest for them are global animal mutilations being done by extraterrestrial biological entities, the abduction of human beings and a beam technology that is used also to pick up these animals, take tissue and fluid and return them, the presence of technologies that could solve the energy problem. What is this secret, powerful, controlling human-slash-ET body that is keeping all of these details from us? How are they going to handle these hard pieces of physical evidence that link directly to the extraterrestrials? Well, they're not. These are the type of things, when I said they're going to paint a picture, look, let's say that you're the mafia. And you can't help it. There's too many reporters coming at you, and pieces of your structure are coming out. And you're going to be in a situation where you've got to be exposed. You've always lived secret and hidden. Well, you're going to help expose yourself in certain areas and tell a lie about it so they don't get the real truth behind it. Well, that's what they're going to do. They're going to tell us a story about why they've been here and what they do here and who they've interchanged with constructed timeline history of events. That's basic human nature. Everybody that is caught tells a story. And if you think you can tell part of the truth and withhold the most damning evidence, that's what you do. Well, the kind of things you just described, would anybody who was involved with them and had the facts of it, and they were supposed to be part of our government, would they ever want to turn and look at a camera and say, oh, by the way, we have all known about this for years. We just didn't want to tell you. Oh, I don't think they're going to own up to that. And what do they say directly to a question, what are the extraterrestrials doing with all these mutilated animals around the world? I've heard about these kind of things, and I've used the word agenda several times here. Well, there's another word that goes hand in hand with agenda. Why you've got one is the word need. If they've got an agenda and they're doing activities like that, they need to be doing that. This isn't just us being laboratory rats. Everything they needed to know about us, if they're this smart and they've been coming here this long, they know as much about us as our own doctors and our own university scientists know about us. So why are they still doing this? They've got a need of some kind. They need to be doing this, these entities. And the question is, what's that need? Why do they need to be on our planet? Why do they need to interact with us at a hidden level and be working with our animals and working with abducting human beings. What's the need? They've got one. He sounds frustrated too, Linda, doesn't he? Yes, and you can understand why. I think all of us uh, who have investigated and been exposed to the subject for some period of time, uh, we realize that one of the, we'll say, common denominators to the possible agenda that is uh, hinted at in some documents, but certainly in the hard physical evidence of what has come out of animal mutilations and what humans in the human abduction syndrome describe, and that is a genetic harvest. There may be other purposes, but sperm and ova and tissue and fluid is being taken from Earth life, and that means it's being used for something. And Jim Sparks, one of the abductees that I focused on my uh, focused on in my book glimpses of other realities uh he very detailed described the kind of android 
part machine, part biological combination, uh, and that there are controllers of the androids, and that the controllers have the minds that overwhelm the humans, but that the little androids are the ones that have mostly interfaced with humans in the abduction syndrome, maybe the animals, and that they are program machines the way we would make a vacuum cleaner uh, to do a, p- a particular chore, but that in this whole uh, huge complex uh, aspect of the phenomena, that these beings that the Colonel Flight Surgeon uh, was clearly describing something that was part robotic and part uh, biological, that, uh, that we are beginning to realize that the government insiders caught on to the fact that when they went to a craft uh, that was down, and if there were entities, they might not be the entities that are even the controllers and makers of the craft and these little androids. They caught on to the fact that they were dealing with worker bees and that there was something else. Seven, nine, seven, eight, eight. Last clear. Seven, go ahead. 